What's up guys, this is Foedin or FoTK and this is another tutorial involving Turbulence FD. Now, I've done a previous video which shows you how to um, create fire and all that stuff. Uh, this tutorial is going to be how to like attach it to models and all that stuff. So, yeah. Uh, if I just open up a Atlas Advanced Warfare model, there we go. What I want to do is I want to attach it to his hands, uh, some fire to his hands. So basically if I... Uh, yeah, what I'll do is I'll attach, obviously we need an emitter. Uh, if you haven't watched the previous video, uh, I'd advise going to watch that, learning how to create fire. Um, and once you know how to do that, then watch this video. Uh, so basically what I'm going to do now is set up my emitter object uh, and place it in the hands as best I can. Do that and then I'll make it editable so that when I come to sizing it down I can sound like this and I'll just lay that on the palms obviously we won't see this in <coughs> oh sorry <coughs> God. we won't see this in the, in the render because we'll turn it off uh, there we go I think that's good enough um, and I'll do the same for the next I don't know if just switching all these will work. Yeah, it does. That's all good. So I just switch. So sorry, swap the parameters round. Uh, so it's basically mirrored it. And now I'm just placing it in hand. And there we go. So then what we need to do is we just need to attach these to our uh, our rig. So our wrists. Uh, that's the legs. There we go. So there's a the wrist, we need the right, no, that's the right one. And we'll just make that a child of the wrist itself and we'll, we'll keep it shown for now. Um, but I'll probably hide it later on. God, this is confusing. There we go. Alright, so now we've got all this sorted, we can start animating our, uh, animating our hands. Um, so if I go to my controls and just start with a basic wrist animation, uh, what should we start? We'll start off with them really close, and then we'll come to 90 frames and we'll open them up wide, something like that. Now, obviously, if you haven't seen my other video, which explains how to use this rig, um, that will be in Atlas download um, if you do wish to go and have a look at that that would be great so now I'll just sort the XOs out as well and we'll start off with the left one this is where it starts to get a wee bit confusing but it can be done there we go I'll only, I'll only do something quick because I'm not going to spend all day doing this just enough for you to get the idea now obviously the XO is moving into the arm but you know we're not going to worry about that actually not worry too much about this animation we just want to show the movement of fire so now we've got our our character movement is not perfect, but oh well. Um, what we need to do is we need to select a container for our turbulence FD. Now, obviously, the fire is going to be on the hands, so we're going to need to make this quite large. So if I go to that, turn up the X a bit, I think that'll be alright. Just move it completely up, that'll do. Maybe bring it in down a bit more, actually. Try something like this. Right, so then we need to go to our our spheres that we added in and create an emitter tag and put both the density and temperature on. Uh, yeah, that's that one. Copy uh, the right wrist. That didn't really work, did it? Okay, we'll just do it again. And set to one and one. And then 
I suppose everything else can be a a collision object, so we'll do that. And right here, let's go and just sh I'll just go and shove all my settings in. And like I said, uh, the previous video shows all of all of this. So if you wish to go and do so, please do. Right, so add my wind about two at a speed of thirty. I'll go for vorticity ten, turbulence twenty, temperature point uh, three three cooling and about eight hundred buoyancy and then the density we can activate um, and shove to about 30 I think I'll go for that set to temperature and our rendering we'll go for the fire shader first and set our 500 and 2000 low and high temperatures we'll go to 80 red and 60 gr oops, 60 green and that's all set so now we just need to do the smoke shader which we need to set to density there we go so if I now run this uh, yes oh god it's taken a bloody while isn't it is that because it's really just taken a long time or alright what's going on here this isn't looking good is it and that's on five voxel size. Maybe, maybe bringing down this box might help. How about that? Let's give that a go. Okay, this is not what I had in mind. All right, take that off. Oh, there we go. It was a collision object, but you know, I'll say it's all just testing. So there we go, now we have our shitty fire. We can now decide to turn the voxel size down to one. And we'll give that a go. Yeah, that is that collision object, it was fighting the actual model. Um but it shouldn't shouldn't really make too much of a difference. Without it. Um Unless I do sort of like these odd bits with collision tags uh, as opposed to the whole thing. So there we go, it's now rendering and we've got our nice little simulation go. But obviously it takes its time as the more uh the more it emits, the more to render. Just wait for that to be done. But as you can see, because we've added the emitter object to our wrists and we've made that sphere the emitter object, wherever that moves, the turbulence FD will sort of react to. It will simulate using the, oh, what's the, the word for it, I don't know, um, to be fair the words just wiped my mind, but obviously if you move the hand up the fire will follow, it will have all the drag and all that kind of good stuff, so if I render that now, there we are, the guy's got fire on his hands, and you can even go a step further to doing maybe something like a point five, if that will let me, yeah, so we'll go for a 0.5 voxel size. So you can really see that the, the simulation is starting to come together now. And then obviously, as I mentioned in the previous video, you'll have to take it into After Effects and um, adjust the various uh, colour corrections and whatnot to enhance it. Um, I'd actually advise rendering the fire separately um, from the actual model. Um, so then you have complete control of the fire as opposed to adjusting the colour correction for the fire and the body if you render it out as a whole um, so there we go guys once this is done I'll just quickly render it and then that will be the end of the video and if you have any questions pop them in the comments section if you want any more tutorials or you know to see me set something to fire or show you how to do something like that um, pop it in the comments I'll you know do my best to do it because I'm looking at a lot more tutorials um, in the next few weeks as I have a bit more time uh, and then there's a few animations that are coming out as well hopefully I uh, just need to get the time to finish those up so there we are what I'll do is I'll end it there otherwise we're going to be here all day um, so I'll stop that and I'll render obviously the wrist movements the finger movements they're all going to need to be done as well this is very basic so actually what I will do is I'll just do a quick camera 
camera pan. There we go. And I'll quickly render it. It won't be a, a massive render because there's no lighting or whatnot on it. But it's enough for you guys to see what it's like. So, yep, 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 yep. Don't need all that. And we'll just render it. And so, obviously, I, I don't know why, I just like seeing fire simulation and all that in 3D space. I don't know why, it just it feels like it comes together and you... I don't know, but... If you understand what I mean, guys. <laughs> so there we go, it's just now rendering, obviously with lighting, uh, maybe a background and all that good stuff, maybe enhance it, and then obviously the colour correction um, of the fire, and then an overall colour correction on top of that. You know, colour balance and colour grading and whatnot can make it look quite nice. Oh, come on. I've just bought this new computer, as you could probably tell by the, the background and all this nut kind of stuff, if you do pay attention to the actual computer in the face. <laughs> um, uh, it's only 8 gig RAM at the minute. Um, but I picked this computer up really cheap for the price. For the price, it's really for well, for the computer. It is the price I picked up is bloody brilliant. So um, I got this, and then I'm going to look to upgrade the RAM to possibly 16, and then maybe 32 or something in the future when I have the money, and then possibly a higher processor in that. So you know, it's a lot better than my old desktop. I mean, I still use my laptop for most of my editing, and that still because it's portable, so it's a lot easier to take around. Um, but yeah, this computer, I, I do like it. It's just I need that extra RAM. I only got it two days ago, so you know. Bought it at 7pm, I think it was, when was it? Thursday night. 7pm Thursday night, and it was in my house before 12 on the Friday. 12pm on Friday, so yeah, great company, but... Usually be waiting bloody weeks for that. Right, let's have a little play. So there we go. You can see the fires obviously emitting. There's a slight jump there, isn't there? Between the smoke and the fire, so obviously I'll have to try and fix that somehow. But there we go, guys. That's basically how I would um, parent fire to an object. So please like and comment. If you've got any more tutorials, please pop it in the comment section. I'll do those as soon as I can. And I'll see you next video. Peace.